what's in my current makeup bag? 2021, spring. Can't believe we've made it here. It's very light, it's very fresh. It's beautifully sort of chic and low key, perfect for spring. I'm gonna show you the products that are in my makeup bag, how I put them on. Let's go back to the start, take all this off and see what I did. Let's get cracking, shall we? I've got all of my stuff in this amazing bag. I bought this from ASOS the other day. It's the flat lay bag from the flat lay company. Uh, and I found this through Emily Johnston, who is fashion foie gras on Instagram. She did a reel on it and I swear to God, I ordered this within 20 seconds of seeing this reel. I don't know, maybe someone has thought of this before and I just haven't seen it, but I've never seen it before. And why had I not thought of this? So it opens out into a big flat piece of fabric with all your stuff on it. And then it's got a drawstring. And when you finish with your stuff, so say you're on your holidays and all your stuff's over the hotel bed or you're on the train and it's on the table, you just draw the drawstring and it gathers back up and there's no tidying involved. First of all, I want to show you what I've been using pretty much every day. And this is in a recent video on Instagram. It's the Codate Radiate Balm. And look, it's just a really, really very sheer, very lightweight tinted moisturiser. Oh, I've used the one in the wrong colour. Normally I use a slightly warmer and darker shade than this, but that's okay. I just wanted to show you how it goes on. So it's got a little bit of a tint, it's got a little bit of a glow, it's got a little bit of um, sunscreen if you were just sort of incidentally outside. It's not really one for if you're outside all day. Anyway, I just wanted to quickly show you that because that is what I've been using every single day, pretty much, unless I'm filming. When it comes to proper foundation, and I will put some on, I'm still hooked on this. It's the Le Beige uh, Healthy Glow Foundation. I use shade B30. I did get slightly sidetracked for a while with um, some fuller coverage foundation, the Tonte Dole from Longcom. I found in one of my old beauty bags, do you remember when cushions were a thing? Cushion foundations. And I found a Tonte Dole cushion. I really liked cushions. I thought that it was a really convenient way of putting on makeup. But they are no more, apparently. Which would have been annoying if you'd invested in the compact, expecting to be able to have a eco-friendly refill every couple of months. So they were a pointless waste of time, weren't they? Now, because I got up at 5.15 this morning, because my son recently has decided that that's a really good time to get up, I'm feeling a bit jaded. So... I've sort of fallen back in love with um, concealer recently. And this is the, I think it's called the Vanishing Concealer. Where's it gone? Hourglass. No, it's written so small. The Vanish, I think it's called. There is a foundation in this line, which I hate. Um, everybody raved about it. It's like a really heavy duty full coverage foundation. I'm not that keen on full coverage foundations full stop. So that's probably why I don't like it that much. But I just found it really difficult to work with. But the, the concealer is amazing. Can you see that's really, really comprehensive kind of coverage? I hope you can. And I've been having a bit of a clear out as well. This is why I found the Tonte Dole cushion. Because I had still got loads of stuff in storage from moving. And I got it all out and I did a big sort. Life's too short to be keeping these things. And to be hanging on to them for one day. Maybe they'll suit me. It's just ridiculous. So I did a huge curl as well on bronzers. I had bronzers of every single shade imaginable. But really, there were only a few shades that actually suit one person aren't there? But I discovered this which I've never tried before so it shouldn't really be in this video but it's the Marc Jacobs Tantastic in 104. The one that I normally use is the L'Oreal Back to Bronze which I think is brilliant, incredibly affordable. 
but I want to give this a go because every time I sort of rediscover a Marc Jacobs beauty product, I'm always just blown away by how good it is. And that's no exception, is it? It's matte, so it looks sophisticated. It's a pretty good shade, I'd say, for my skin tone. I like that one. And you know what? I love a huge compact like that. Obviously not very convenient if you're going places with it. But um, you get a really good... What is going on with my camera? You get a really good swirl going. Swirly thing. With your brush. And the brush I'm using is gorgeous. But pricey. This is a Shantakai one. I've got this whole stack of Trini eyeshadows. Fortune is it that I normally use or Virtue? Let's have a look. Might be Virtue. No, I think it's Fortune. But these cream shadows, they just glide on. And they are the easiest, easiest thing to use. So look, this is, this is like minute makeup if I wasn't chatting away. And this might look really sort of sheer and unassuming, but once it's on, it really does last all day, it doesn't shift. So yeah, that's the Trini in Fortune. Take a look at that colour. It's really lovely. Give my eyelashes a little curl. My most hated job ever. I think my years of modelling completely put me off eyelash curling. It makes me so nervous. And I'm using a new discovery. This is the Kevin Aucoin Indecent Mascara. If you want to see a longer video on this, just this mascara, there's one on my Instagram, at Ruth Crilly. And um, I just like it. It's really neat and, and sophisticated. Almost there. A little bit of brow stuff. This is the Glossier Boy Brow. I swap between, as you know, this and the Gimme Brow from Benefit. Lots of brow stuff coming out all the time, but these two are still my favourite. The Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Brows is actually really, really nice, but I still haven't quite got the hang of it as neatly as with the other two, so it's not in my permanent makeup bag. It doesn't take long and I never get them right. I never get them matching so that doesn't really matter. A little bit of cream blush. This is one of the most gorgeous ones I found. Just because it's just got the loveliest, loveliest texture. Really sort of bouncy. This is the Beauty Pie Fresh Faced um, Cream Blush. And look, it's just gorgeous. They do a few different shades. But I like this one just because it's really... It's like that colour of when you were little and the scab fell off your knee and there was that really bright pale pink skin underneath. Obviously that's not the most flattering comparison to give of a luxurious beauty product but there you go. Look at that, I just think it's really enlivening. That's giving a little bit of a youthful flush. That's what we all want isn't it? On the lips as per usual at the moment, just a bit of lip liner and a little bit of lip balm. So this is um, the Clinique Quick Liner Intense in shade one. And I just do a tiny bit on the cupid's bow. Tiny bit underneath, lip balm. Smallest amount. 
I can really get away with a tiny bit more blush, you know. I'm going to use my brush. You can do that with your cream blushes. Just a tiny bit on the brush and take it. I like it quite high. But really, you don't need it past there and you don't need it past here. So it's sort of concentrating. It is that cliche of apples of the cheeks, isn't it? Because you see quite a lot of the time it going that way, but what's the point? Because it just disappears. And really here's where it's bringing the sort of fullness back into the face, which makes it look a little bit more youthful. So that's it, so fresh, so simple. Glowy, lovely springtime makeup, nice and light. There are a couple of real winners of products in here. Mainly the Beauty Pie Cream Blush, which I think might be the nicest one I've ever found. And the Trini um, Cream Eyeshadows. Coincidence maybe that both of them, or maybe not, are cream products that you can apply with your fingertips. Maybe I'm having a moment with the old cream stuff, but they both last really well. And they just look youthful on the skin. So I've linked to everything below, there's more details below. And, um, oh! Okay, I'm going to have to come back and do my red lip. It's very important that I do this, but I've got to film my skincare video first, so I'll come back. Okay, I said about this red lip. Now this, I have to use this up because something's come out of the lid. It's a Tom Ford little mini handbag lipstick um, in Neotropic, which they still do. Um, but they bought these out a couple of years ago and they're little tiny, tiny lipsticks. They're outrageously expensive. Let's just get that out of the way. But I love this colour and the lid has broken. And so it's got a shelf life in my bag of about two days because it will just get absolutely ruined. So I've decided to wear it a lot and use it up. I'm just going to give my lips a quick line. Like thus. Uh, I don't know whether you can see, but it's like a, almost like a sheer gel. I not like your opaque, brighter than bright red, really um, sort of heavy duty red. It's just light and glossy. I normally just think, like, what, what are you doing with a glossy, sheer red? Because surely red should be punchy and glamorous and in your face. I do really like this. I feel like it's a beginner's red. Do you know what I mean? It, it's um, a little bit easier, a little bit more user friendly. So I'm going to be using that up. That was just something to add into my little makeup routine. And now I really am finished. That's it. Where's my remote control?